am I that you are mindful to love me? Oh, when you hurt me, when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? Oh, how you love me.
Greetings, everyone. This is Bruce Mays, Recovery Ministry Director here at Peninsula Bible Church. I want to let you know I miss you all and hope to see you in person real soon. In the meantime, premiering every Friday night at 7 p.m., we have r r Online, which features one of our bands, followed by a speaker. And then on Sunday mornings, premiering at 8.45 a.m., we have our worship service, Step Closer, online. And you can join us for either one of those at www.pbc.org slash recovery, which is the recovery webpage on the PBC website. And if you watch on YouTube on your phone or your computer, you can join us for the live chat. We'd love you to come and join us for that. Um, if you would also would like some prayer, you can email your prayer request to brucemays at gmail.com. And I will make sure that a team prays for your requests. And last but not least, if you would like to give online or by text, you can visit pbc.org slash give or send a check to PBC 3505 Middlefield Road, Palo Alto, California, 94306. Thank you and God bless you all. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to r, r My name is Bruce. I will be your speaker tonight. I'd like to thank Isaiah for the music tonight. We love when Isaiah comes and plays for us. It's always a blessing. So thank you, Isaiah. So let me pray before we go any further. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for this time together. I pray, Lord, that um, as I speak tonight, you would speak through me and that we would, our hearts would be penetrated by your word and that we would get to know you a little better, Lord, and maybe get to know ourselves even a little better. And thank you for the hope 
that you give us, Father. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, well, tonight we're going to talk about suffering and glory. And when you put those words together, it doesn't seem like they belong together, but they do in the context of the scripture we're going to read tonight. So let's get started. So tonight we're going to be in Romans 8. So if you want to get your Bibles out and follow along with me, I'm going to put it on the screen here. But it's always good to have your own Bible if you can. And um, so I'm going to share the screen with you. And we are going to go right from the beginning. So we are in Romans 8, 18 through 28. And so what I'm going to do is read the scripture first, and then we'll go back through it little by little and uh, kind of dissect it a little bit and see what God is trying to reveal to us through Paul's words. So let's get right to the text and jump right in. So we're going to start in verse 18. That's Romans 8, 18. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. For we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies he has promised us. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed with words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. That's a lot of scripture. And tonight's message I have entitled, Incomparable Glory. Incomparable meaning that nothing compares to it. The glory we're talking about here is there's nothing, there's nothing in our experience that can even grasp the glory we're talking about here. Um, it's too big, I think, for our imaginations to grasp. So that's why it's called incomparable glory, because God's glory is incomparable. And I'll explain as we go along here. So let me give you a little context here. Um, Jesus, uh, in chapter 7, or Paul, in chapter 7, talks about how he wants to do the right thing, but he doesn't have the power to carry it off. And the things that he doesn't want to do, he does. And he realizes that it's not him, but it's the sin that lives in him that is causing these for him to do these things, causing him to stumble, the brokenness that we're all born with. We're all born into sin, and our natural tendency is to sin. And because we don't have the power to stop, only God has the power. And when 
when sin separated us from God, we didn't have that power anymore, which is why Jesus had to come down um, to die for us so that we could, so the part that was um, severed between us and God, the spiritual part that was severed between man and God could be repaired. And that's why Jesus came down to die on the cross. So that's in verse seven. And then verse eight, Paul starts to talk about the life in the spirit on now that we are, now that we are saved, now that we are new creations, we now have, have the ability to choose the spirit over the flesh. And, and what I mean by that is that before we were saved, before we became new creations, we only had one power to draw from. That was from our own power, our own, our own uh, what they call in the Bible, the flesh, our own abilities and our own power. And when the Holy Spirit comes into us, and that we now have the ability to choose the power that can, the power that can overcome sin and um, things in our lives that are ugly and that um, are not pleasing to God. And so now, now we actually have a choice in these matters. And so before the verses we started, we're going to go to verse 17, which says this. It says, and this is Romans 8, 17, the verse before the verses we just read. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his sufferings. And so that's where glory and suffering come together. Um, if we want to have God's glory, we are going to have to share in the suffering, in his suffering. And um, that's a hard thing to grasp. But now that, we have new, now that we're new creations and we have the Holy Spirit living in us, we are able to, sh able to walk through the suffering that we're sharing so that we can share his glory later. Now, don't get me wrong. If, if I didn't have the Holy Spirit inside me, I would not be able to um, be able to sustain sharing in his suffering. The only reason that I can is because the Holy Spirit lives in me. Now, this is only available to those who have professed their faith in Christ. And if you're in recovery, like I am, I tried to quit drinking and drugs and tried to live the correct way many, 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 many times in my own strength, and I never could do it. And it got to the point to where I was so bankrupt from my own resources. My own resources were bankrupt, so I had to reach out to God in desperation to come into my life and save me. And that's what happened. And now that I'm in Christ, now that the Holy Spirit lives within me, I get to share with God's glory, but first I need to share with this in his suffering, this side of heaven. And we all going to have to do that. All of us that believe are going to have suffering. You know, I thought when I first came to Christ that my suffering would be over. I was sadly mistaken. As a matter of fact, um, when I got baptized and turned my life over to Christ, I had the worst two months of my life uh, just following that. And, but the thing is, is I had to go through that to get to the point to where I could give it all to God. I had to be at the end of myself and bankrupt. And now because I surrendered and gave up, I get the prize of sharing in God's glory, but I must share in his suffering as well. So there's three points I'd like to make tonight. And um, they are, first, we can rejoice in suffering. We can rejoice in suffering. Number two, our hope is in Christ. Our hope is in Christ. And the third point that I'd like to make tonight is the Holy Spirit is our advocate. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. So we will start with verse, with the first point, we can rejoice in suffering. I never thought in my life until I came to Christ that I would ever rejoice in suffering. I'm one of, I'm one to complain and moan and complain 
um, when anything goes wrong, when I'm hurting in any way, when I'm suffering in any way, that's the way I was until I came to Christ. And I still complain once in a while, but it's nothing like I used to because I know that this suffering isn't going to last forever. And then I know I have something to look forward that this suffering isn't going to last forever. So um, let's go to the text here. We can rejoice in suffering. And verse uh, 18 says, Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. So basically he's comparing the suffering that we have to what God is going to reveal to us later and saying that it doesn't even compare, that we won't even think twice about the suffering that we've endured here on this planet, on this earth compared to what he's going to reveal to us someday. And that is a wonderful thought. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that day when God will reveal who his children really are. So we're going to find out. That's when the rubber meets the road. That's when we're going to find out who's really in Christ, who really surrendered their life over to God and who's um, just saying they are. So when that future day, God will reveal who his children really are. And I, and I pray that I'm them. I'm one of them. I'm, I'm confident that I'm one of them, but it still makes me want to do my best. It makes me want to follow God and everything that he tells me. And then verse 20, it says against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse. So the rest of creation, the planet, the sky, the earth, the planets, the sun, everything, everything that God created that we can see, and even the things we can't see, was also subject to the curse. So when man sinned, it, all of creation, not just man fell, but all of creation fell. And um, so even though you know, the, the planet and the, and the plants and the stars in the sky and everything that's in it um, didn't cause it, but man did by sinning. When man sinned, all of creation suffered. All of creation was cursed and we were separated from God. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children, us, in glorious freedom from death and decay. So what's happening right now is that we are un in bondage to death and decay right now because of sin, because of sin in the world, because sin was introduced into the world, everything is dying and decaying. Not only our bodies, but the earth itself, the sun itself, the planets, the stars, there's a scientific term called the second law of thermodynamics, which means that everything is decaying. Everything is winding down. It's like, uh, it's, it's like everything is, um, is going to die. Everything is dying as we speak. My body's decaying. Everything on the earth is, is um, decaying and dying. And that's because the sin was introduced into the world. The good news is in verse 22, it says, for we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Now, childbirth, as you know, is very painful. And um, thank goodness I didn't have to experience it. But I know there's women out here that have experienced childbirth and from what I've seen, it does not sound like it is very easy, that uh, it is very painful. And so Paul here is, cre is comparing the creation's groaning from death and decay is as in the pains of childbirth. So when, when a woman has a child, when she's having the child, she suffers and it's intense pain. But when the child comes out, 
All that pain and suffering is all forgotten because of the glory that's in her hands, her new baby. And that's what creation is groaning for, for its new, um, for, for a new heavens and a new earth. And so it's just like childbirth. Everything, all the suffering and pain is all worth it in the end because at the other end, the other side of once the child is born, all the suffering and pain is forgotten because of the glory that's beheld. So that's a pretty good picture. And I, I, I don't think I could make a better picture than that myself. So I'm not going to try. <laughs> um, okay. And I want to, you know, so back to verse 18, yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. So what we have coming is so awesome. It can't even be put into words. And let me um, go to a couple scriptures that fall into this. Um, and have you ever thought of suffering as a privilege? Um, Paul talks about suffering as a privilege. And I didn't get that. Um, I didn't get that until recently. Um, and I'm still, I still have a little problem with it. I still have, I'm, I'm still not completely, um, I'm still not completely uh, at this place where, where, when I suffer that I can consider it a privilege all the time, because like I told you before, I'm a complainer and a moaner and a whiner sometimes when things don't go my way. But I do know that I have the hope that is coming that God's going to reveal to me. So in Philippians 1.29, the New Living Translation says this, for you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but also the privilege of suffering for him. And Paul considered it a privilege to suffer for Christ because of what was coming, because what he knew was coming for the glory that he knew was going to come. And so that's how Paul saw it, that, that it was a privilege to suffer for Christ. And I'm getting there. I'm not all the way there yet, but at times I understand it and I can live it out. And God is, um, uh, he is sanctifying me right now so that, um, I can walk through suffering. I have the Holy Spirit living in me so I can walk through suffering. It's the only reason I can. Um, if I didn't have the Holy Spirit, I would be complaining and whining all the time. And um, that's not the man I am anymore. And then in 2 Corinthians 4.17, uh, English Standard Version says this, For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Now, if this was you or me that wrote this scripture, it probably wouldn't mean as much compared to when that Paul wrote it, because Paul was beaten, stoned, shipwrecked, thrown in jail, left for dead. Uh, Paul went through a hundred times more pain and suffering than you and I will ever go through. And he still calls that a light momentary affliction. Suffering, he calls a light momentary affliction. That is crazy, but it's true. And so when, when we're suffering, we're in the middle of pain and suffering, we can remember that what God is going to bring to us, what God is going to put into our life is far more glorious than anything we've went through. So that, so, so whatever pain and suffering we're going to go, we go through, we won't even think about it anymore after God reveals his glory to us. That's a great, great promise. And I live in that promise. And when I looked outside that window and saw this world looking like it's burning and that it's, um, it's going to end someday, this fills me with hope. I hope it does for you as well. And then also C.S. Lewis puts it this way. When this happens, when, when God reveals his glory to us, the door on which we have been knocking all our lives will open at last. And I, rem I can remember, I mean, my whole life, even, you know, up until I uh, accepted the Lord into my life, I knew there was something missing. I, there was some, there's always been something missing in my life. There had always been something missing. And I tried to fill it with drugs, alcohol, um, food, um, pornography, anything I could, that I could try to fill 
what was missing. And I could never, I never achieved that. And, and I know it's the same with everyone else that um, because we need God, we need, we need the spiritual connection with God. And if that's not with us, we can't function and things don't seem correct. Things seem wrong. Right. Um, so someday we're going to have that glory. We're going to suffer until we get there, but it's producing glory. Right. And we go back to the, that other, um, for you have been given the privilege of trusting. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Next one for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us the eternal weight of glory. So it's preparing us, preparing for us an eternal weight of glory. So the glory that we get has something to do with our suffering. And um, so we have this hope. It's awesome. The next, so we've already, so our first um, was our first point <laughs> was we can rejoice in suffering because of the hope that we have. Our next one is our hope is in Christ. So let's go to the text. And we believers also, also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. So not only does the creation groan, but we even groan. And even though we have the Holy Spirit that's within us as believers, if you've accepted Christ and the Holy Spirit lives within you, then you've had a foretaste of the future glory. I know I have, because I know I never really had a life until Jesus came into my life. And I could never, I never had the power to walk through things and overcome things. But since the Holy Spirit's come in with, in me, I've been able to overcome some things. And I know that's because the Holy Spirit's within me. And that's just a taste of the glory that that's to come. That's just a small down payment. That's just a small taste of what's to come. And so if we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering, and we can, we can do this, we can, we can walk through this because our hope is in Christ, because we've accepted Christ and we believe what he says. And our hope is that Jesus, God promised us to uh, end our suffering someday and to be released from sin and suffering. When we came to Christ, we are released from that, but not 100%, not completely when the new heavens and the new earth come, we will be, we will see God's glory. We will see um, something that we can't even, I mean, even the great apostle Paul can't even compare it, can't even um, describe it. Um, and we're not going to, we can't describe it. It's something that's beyond our imagination. So he goes on to say, we too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children including the new bodies he has promised us. So the creation waits, groans like we groan, creation groans, we groan with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights, when we'll see the full glory, when we'll see his promises come to fruition. This is what allows us to walk through suffering because the hope that we have in Christ. He has promised us, it says, including the new bodies he has promised us. So we're being, we're promised something. We've been given a down payment with the Holy Spirit, which means that his promise is going to happen. His promise is going to come true. He's not going to back out on his promise. That's why he gave us foretaste of the Holy Spirit within us so that we could have this hope in us. It says we were given this hope when we were saved. And how were we saved? We surrendered our lives to Jesus Christ. We invited him to be the Lord and Savior, the Lord of our lives, and he saved us. That's how we got this hope. It didn't just come out of the sky. It came because, because I turned my life over to Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit came in me, and now I have this hope, and I know it's true, and I'm not, I'm, I, I know I, I, um, I'm not always 100% um, confident in this if that's the word, 
but I'm not a hundred percent um, always. Um, I, I'm I'm always full of hope, but it, it's not always a hundred percent. That's what I'm trying to say. And um, so we we hope for this. When we when we were saved, we were given this hope. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. So we don't have this yet. We have a taste of it. We don't have the genuine, complete um, thing. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. Because of the Holy Spirit living in me, I can wait patiently and confidently that I will receive God's glory someday when the new heavens and the new earth are here, when Jesus comes back to take us to him and we're in his kingdom. Um, we have this hope that we won't have to suffer anymore. But until then, we're going to have to walk through suffering. And we can only do that, and we only have hope because of Christ in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So the next point I'd like to make is the Holy Spirit is our advocate. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. And we'll go into the text here. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. I want to stop right there for a minute. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness, and he prays for us. You know, when I was in the hospital with the coronavirus, the third night I was there thinking I wasn't going to live, I didn't think I was going to make it. I couldn't come up with any words to pray. I had no words I could come up with. The only, the, the, words, the only words I could come up with were, Jesus, I trust you. Those are the words I prayed over and over and over. I couldn't form any other thoughts in my mind. But now, well, actually now, I know now that at that moment, the Holy Spirit was praying for me. Even though I didn't have the words to pray, the Holy Spirit was praying for me. Um, things that could not be expressed with words. And the awesome thing is in verse 27, it says, and the father who knows all hearts knows what the spirit is saying for the spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. You know, in scripture where it talks about um, if we pray according to his will, our prayers will be answered. So who more than God or the Holy Spirit, I should say, of the triune God would know what is God's will more than the Holy Spirit. That gives me goosebumps because that means that God has indwelled me with the Holy Spirit and the part that indwelled me with the Holy Spirit prays to God, the Father. So it's God himself inside of me that's praying to himself for me. That's like hard to wrap your mind around, but it's true. And so I'm, I'm a hundred percent sure the Holy Spirit was praying for me in that hospital room. And I did trust Jesus. And the only reason I could do that is because the Holy Spirit resides in me. So the father knows all hearts. The father who knows all hearts knows what the spirit is saying because it's him. It's part of him, it's part of the triune God. Oh my goodness. Um, and so the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's will, prays for us, knows what we need, knows what we don't need. Um, that's pretty awesome. That's a pretty, uh, that's some really good hope to have. Um, that the Holy Spirit is my helper. When I'm weak, he helps me. That gives me a lot of hope that the taste I have of what God has to give um, means that his promises for more glory are true. And I can, I can, you can put that in the bank. And we know that in verse 28, it says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So I know that any suffering that happens, any pain I walk through, God causes that to work for my good because I love him and I've been called according to his purpose. And I want to give this message to everybody that I run across that um, I can rejoice in suffering because my hope is in Christ 
and I have the Holy Spirit to help me walk through that. And, um, you know, when I, um, before I came, got clean and sober, I hadn't, I couldn't do anything in my life worthwhile. But since I've turned my life over to the care of God through Jesus Christ, he's given me the ability to make the changes. I should say, he's made the changes in my life. He's given me the power to choose the spirit over the flesh. And that is awesome. And I, and I hope this gives you, I, I pray this gives you hope because it gives me a lot of hope. Um, when I was looking out the window yesterday, I wasn't full of hope, but I am now because I, because of God's word and his promises and the down payment he's already given me with the Holy Spirit and knowing the glory that's to come is something I can't even describe with words. That's so awesome. So I'm going to leave you with the three points that we, uh, that I wanted you to remember to go home with. Remember, we can rejoice in suffering. We can rejoice in suffering because the Holy Spirit indwells us. And if you don't know Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit doesn't indwell you, you can do that at any time. You can pray to God. You can pray, pray to the Father to ask. You can pray to the Son to ask him to indwell your heart, to come into your life and be your Lord so that he can save you. And then these things are possible. Doesn't mean you're not going to suffer anymore but it means you can walk through suffering knowing that someday you will receive something that your suffering won't even compare to. You won't even remember it. It won't even be, um, it won't even be an issue with us anymore when the glory of God is revealed to us. The suffering that we've endured won't even compare. We won't even, it, we won't bat an eyelash anymore once we receive God's glory. Number two, our hope is in Christ. Our hope is in Christ. That's the only answer, folks. That's the only answer to this world, to the heartache and the hopelessness and the helplessness that we feel is Christ. When that's the only hope for this world, that's the only hope for California, that's the only hope for the United States, Christ is our only hope. And this is not our home. Our home is the kingdom of God. We are here to serve God's purposes. We are here to suffer for Christ. We are here to, um, to pass along what's given to us so freely, the grace and mercy of Christ. This message, this, um, this message of hope, this ministry of reconciliation, what we have, we can pass on to people. And that's because our hope is in Christ. And the last one is the Holy Spirit is our advocate. We, because we, our hope is in Christ, we have the Holy Spirit who lives inside us, allowing us to walk through the suffering that eventually we won't even consider suffering once the glory of God has been revealed to us. That is a great promise. I hope this fills you with hope because it does me. Incomparable glory, there's nothing greater. Thank you, and let me pray. Oh, it's been great spending this time with you folks, and, and I am so full of hope right now. Um, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, sending your son down into our, your creation to die for us so that we could be um, reunited with you spiritually, Father. We thank you for that. We thank you for that wonderful hope that you've given us, Lord. We thank you for the for the Holy Spirit that resides in us so that when we thank you, Lord, that we can suffer for your sake, Lord. Um, we pray, Father, as we do suffer and we walk through pain, that you would walk through us. Thank you that um, our hope is in you. Thank you to give us this hope that the glory to come is beyond anything we can suffer on this earth. And Lord, um, thank you that our hope is in Christ. Thank you, Father. We are so grateful and we love you. We praise you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good night, everybody. I hope you were blessed by that message.